So what we're gonna do today on SK Lifestyle is see how reasonable, how practical it is to transport an inflatable boat in your car. Right now I have a 2005 Highlander that I'll be using. That's an SUV in case you were wondering. And yes, we're gonna be putting in a 12 foot Saturn inflatable boat, deflated of course. And we also have a six horsepower Hankai gasoline motor. And we have a few extras as well, like the external gas tank, the oars, uh, some seats, all that kind of good stuff, a bimini top. So yes, we're gonna be putting it in here and seeing what it looks like. But first, I'm gonna actually use some of the boxes that the bigger pieces came in, just so you have an idea of what's the least amount of space something like that'll take up. And then I'll put it in just the way I have it actually set in the garage right now, which is probably how it's really gonna be most times day to day. And then stay tuned to the end, because I do have a little hack, a little tip for you guys, so you can check that out. But that said, let's get started. So let's take a look. Be sure to subscribe to SK Lifestyle. Yeah, that's right. You just want to hit that subscribe button right there and the notification bell. All right, so I'll walk around real quick just to give you a view of what it looks like from every side. And then I'll go ahead and discuss it, what I did and so forth. All right, so this is a 2005 Highlander. It's a... SUV, yes, but it is, you know, pretty old, over 15 years old, so it's not the largest. That said, there's pretty good room in here. But what did I do? Now, again, I told you, this is the minimum amount of room. Yes, I do have the box for the motor, not just the motor itself, but what I found is it is very nice to transport it in the box. It's already carved out the way it should be. It's going to sit right in there, even if there's fluids in the tank or something. You know what I mean? I still, you know, wrap a little bag in there, you know, just in case any fluids drop down. But other than that, we pretty much got everything that we need. Again, yes, you could just do the motor and save some room, but, you know, things are going to be banging against it, whatnot. That said, back here, you might have seen me have to pull some stuff out. I do have this little kind of like plastic rug thing that you would use in the house for your boots or something. I like to use that for gas stuff in the car. So of course that's where I wanted the external tank to be on. Um, you can see I do have a little bit of um, a plastic bag around it just to protect uh, some of the parts that are going to connect into the boat, uh, you know, the boat motor. Um, and also to try to help catch any kind of fluids if something did leak out of the hose from the front. From there you want to make sure that you know nothing on the other end of the connection is really going to bang against it so i set it up so that you know this was going to be blocking it there's a little bit of an open space and other than that you know i just try to pack reasonably got some of the small stuff hidden up in here so leave your comments down below what do you think about this packing job now you can see yes there is still some room up on top plenty of room if you got you know fishing gear or some other backpacks and so forth probably about 40% of the, you know, the rear part of the car is still open, 30 to 40%, but it is pretty well taken up. And of course the front seats are just, you know, clear. So that's with the boxes. Now, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and put the actual boat in the car the way I have it right now. So you're gonna see the difference between what, you know, a perfect situation would be and what it's really gonna be like. So let's do it. So obviously a different setup. You can see I got the uh, motor way up top. At least for me, that was really the only way to get it in. Again, you can't just flip this any way you want to because you need to make sure that it's sitting the proper way so you don't accidentally have stuff leaking out. So you can see I got the actual external tank over here now. Still got it on this, kind of propped up, uh, you know, in between with that just to hold it in place and so forth. 
This is the cover that goes around the actual boat if you want to carry it. You can see it has straps and handles. And yes, I'll get to that in just a moment. And then you see we got all the gear. Same stuff. Got the seats, uh, the seat topper, the bags, and the life jackets. Everything. So that's what we're looking like now. So it is still doable, of course, even with the way I have it. Now, again, many of you may be saying, you know, what's up with uh, not carrying it in this? Well, it's a little easier to put back, like fold it up and everything with two people. But again, it's still kind of cumbersome. And you do need a tarp, you know, to prep it when you're putting it all together and stuff and all that. You don't want it to just be dragging on the grass where there's sticks and rocks or on the ground where there's cement. So it's just easy to have it wrapped up in the tarp afterwards. And this bag, it's nice and all that. If you're very OCD and you have somebody or two, uh, another person or two helping you, you might be able to fold it up good enough that you can get it in that bag and then yes, you can use it. But then you're gonna be taking it out of there, unfolding the tarp anyway. I'm a little lazy. I'd rather just wrap this tarp in like one or two ratchet straps, which I'll probably do before the end of the season. And that's the way I'll just kind of carry it around. But either way, it's much larger than just the box that it was in. So that's the point. The Bimini top's not too much different than the box, but I just wanted to give you that kind of look. With that said, now I'm gonna give you a little tip on what helped us and how we actually transported all this stuff. So let me show you that right now. All right, so here it is. And that is a little extension rack on the back so that you can actually pour, you know, take things with you. Of course, you can use this for bikes, you can use it for generators, whatever. Obviously, we used it for the gas powered motor and the external tank. And I actually brought an extra gas tank as well, which I just strapped down on the side. So this thing was very useful. And now you can see the car has much more space yes and you also don't have the gasoline stuff in here or any other oils and stuff so you don't have to deal with possible fumes which usually isn't too bad for a quick you know 20 30 minute trip to the lake even a two three hour ride somewhere you know you got the window crack you can make it happen but this is just nicer you don't got to deal with that stuff you don't worry about leaks and all that nice more enjoyable ride of course and just more space now yes this thing does cost a little bit of money. We got this from Tractor Supply. I want to say it cost about a buck 80, and I did get the extra extension or like lift piece here. Now, I think this is important because otherwise this rack would be right here, right? Now imagine even trying to go down my little eight foot incline here, you're probably gonna bottom out when you hit the road or something. You're gonna have to go everywhere at an angle and really slow and that was just not tenable for an actual long distance trip that we were going on. So by putting on this lift, everywhere I went when I pulled out of a parking lot or so forth, of course I was still slow, I didn't, you know, slam on the throttle, but it never scraped, it never hit the ground or anything, you were fine. And if it did, it's gonna be this hard half inch thick steel right here that's gonna bottom out. It's not gonna be this, which is gonna bend and mess up a lot more. So you know that was a really good situation so i just suggest it yes it is a little bit more money and stuff but you can use this for everything it doesn't even just have to be for your boat and we got the one that has the arm piece so when you're not using this you can lift this rack up and have it flat against your car and not have to worry about extra extended stuff on the back of your car when you're not really using it so that's my trip trip that's my trick and hack for trips with the inflatable boat packed up in the car. Now again, leave your comments down below. Am I ridiculous for not using this thing every time? Am I just a lazy guy? Perhaps, you can leave it in the comments. It won't hurt me that much. I'm sure other people will be interested. What other types of ways are you transporting your inflatable boat? You could see I have the cargo rack up top. Of course, we did use that for a lot of stuff too. You know, that's primarily where I put some of the seats and that sort of stuff, but not everybody has a rack, so I didn't want to start using that. But of course, that's another hack as well. Go online to like Facebook or something, Marketplace. You can find these for 50, 100 bucks even. Even at 100 bucks, hopefully it's in really good shape, but they are extremely useful, extremely useful. So 
Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, hit that like button, you know? Hit that share button as well. Make sure that you're sharing this with everybody. It really helps me out getting those views, getting in the algorithm, getting the channel out there. I'm almost at 6,000 subscribers, so help me get there. SK Lifestyle, I appreciate you watching. See y'all next time.